thank you very much. Um, I'm feeling a little bit inadequate with all the fantastic stories and journeys we've um, heard this morning. And at the last slot before break, I, I will do my best to um, keep you enthused and live up to the expectations so far. Um, it's a real honor to be here with you all today. Um, I'm obviously Welsh, and to hear uh, a story from um, my home area is really inspiring, so it's great to meet you, the, uh, somebody who's having that impact, because I know firsthand the challenges you're facing. Um, I'm going to be spending the next 10 or so minutes taking you through how PDSA have used Petwise MOTs to assess quality of life and influence clients to continue or change their behaviour for the benefit of their pet's well-being. Um, you'll also be pleased to hear that to reinforce some of the messages I'm going to be saying are similar or if not the same to what we've already heard this morning and also yesterday as well. So a little caveat first, I'm not a vet, I'm not clinically trained, my background is largely in people development and animal welfare project management. Um, I received my call into charity veterinary five years ago and um, I've really found my passion and love for working with people and animals in one sector. <coughs> I'm not going to be also discussing any particular spe uh, specialist clinical topics today. What I will be covering is the backgrounds to Petwise MOTs and why they were developed, an overview of their structure, how we developed our clinical team to deliver the service, and finish with an overview of their impact to date. We all know that the Animal Welfare Act's introduction in 2006 brought with it a new duty of care for pet owners along with outlining what must be provided in order for pets to experience good health and happiness, which we've come to know as the five welfare needs. In 2010, the review of the Act's introduction placed responsibility on the, on the veterinary profession and the animal welfare organisations to raise awareness of its existence and the five welfare needs within it. Back in 2011, PDSA launched their first animal welfare report, to really understand the state of our pet nation, uh, pet nation and the issues facing pets across the UK. This showed us that whilst owners genuinely care about their pets, knowledge and understanding of what they should actually provide is low. With this, we began to understand what more we could do to help our clients understand their responsibilities and really make a difference for pets. So what were pet owners saying and doing at the time? The Paw Report also told us that veterinary professionals were the most common source of pet care advice, and two-thirds of pet owners believe the consultation room is the best place to promote the welfare needs. So it felt natural that whatever we were going to do internally needed to involve these. Trying to shoehorn into what we already currently did was never going to work, with already short consultation times and a, and a historic focus on health rather than welfare. With this in mind, we set about creating a new approach to health and welfare checks, structured around the five welfare needs, and we call these Petwise MOTs. In short, a Petwise MOT is a dedicated appointment with a vet or vet nurse lasting up to 20 minutes where all or a selection of the welfare needs are discussed, assessed on a traffic light scale, and an action plan produced in collaboration with the owner. To keep things as simple and straightforward for the clients, as well as ourselves, we limit the recommended actions to a maximum of three. A universally recognized traffic light scale helps us to identify areas to prioritize, and assists clients to understand the impact of their actions, and it can also help to reinforce positive behavior. At every MOT, a client receives a My Petwise MOT record book, which is designed to follow the flow of the consultation. On the inside cover, we have the usual introductions, where we record the client's name, pet's name, our own. Before explaining the purpose of the visit, what we'll cover, and our role as the vet or vet nurse. So for example, 
We may set expectations with something like, you may be aware that in, 20, in 2006, a law was introduced to help protect our pets. It outlines the five things they need to stay happy and healthy. And these are good health, being able to show normal behavior, companionship on their own or with another pet, a suitable diet, and a safe environment to live in. What we'll do today is explore each of these in a bit more detail and see how they're currently being met. I'll use a red, amber, or green scale to identify areas that we're doing well or could perhaps do a little bit differently. It's nothing to worry about, and I'm here to help you all the way. So it's really reinforcing that closeness and supportive relationship that we've grown over a number of years with our clients. For each welfare need, there are examples of behaviours that could be categorised as red, amber or green. These are based on the codes of practice and are a guide for, profession, for the professional carrying out the consultation. They help maintain consistency and form the basis for us to measure improvements at a later date. The action plan page is where we record everything, everything discussed, including the score and agreed actions. Through delivering Petwise MOTs, our aim was to achieve improved awareness and understanding of the welfare needs, which ultimately will help result in positive changes in owner behaviour, resulting in greater welfare need achievement and long-term pet wellbeing. To help our teams deliver effective and efficient MOTs, we developed a one-day workshop on completion. Attendees were able to clarify the background of the Animal Welfare Act, describe the five welfare needs of cats, dogs, and rabbits in greater detail, describe the basic structure and content of a petwise MOT, and understand the communication skills required to really effectively influence a client to do something differently. During the course, we explore some of the challenging situations that, that we may encounter during a consultation environment and develop communication skills to really help assist with these. For example, handling emotive topics, promoting products and services, and managing clients who provide too little or too much information. How we approach these situations now was really critical. Handled badly, they would result in poor client service and potentially no follow through on the recommended actions that we're suggesting, which ultimately was going to provide uh, impact on the longer term pet's well-being. Now, for me, one of the challenges when it came to promoting products and procedures in our consultations and veterinary practices was that we focus always on the benefit to the pet. And obviously that's rightly so when it's their health and welfare at, um, at stake. But ultimately, it's not the cat, dog, or rabbit coming into our consultation rooms with a purse asking to be spayed, neutered, vaccinated, or begging for flea and, flea and worm treatments. Whilst the majority of pet owners will want to do something purely for their pet's benefit, some may need to see what's in it for them as well, particularly when finances are a concern. A simple way to approach this is to provide features, advantages, and benefits whenever a product or service is recommended. Features explain what the product is or what's involved in the procedure. Ad advantages tell us what the benefit is for the pet and benefits ultimately tell us what's in it for the client. So for a primary vaccination course, we could say two injections, two weeks apart, which provide immunity for your pet from deadly diseases. For this, you means peace of mind from unexpectedly cost, uh, unexpected costly vet bills, which are entirely preventable. Immediately, I know why it's essential for my pet, and immediately I know what's in it for me as well and what the longer term benefits for myself are going to be too. With emotive topics, we use an approach of showing empathy and an understanding for the client's situation. For something like the wrong diet, it could be something as simple as acknowledging how easy it is to make a mistake when there's so many uh, pet food manufacturers and brands out there and flashy marketing campaigns. We then explain why something should or shouldn't be done before providing options. 
Options are important, as if we personally make a choice, it is potentially more, um, more likely that we follow it through rather than having something imposed on us, particularly if it goes against everything we've ever been told by the breeder, the pet shop, or the deadly internet. <laughs> Finally, our course has covered a range of questioning skills, which assist our vets and nurses to retain control of the consultation. We'd start with open questions to gain a broad understanding before drilling down into areas where further information is needed. For an example, an MOT could start with, describe to me the normal daily routine for Max, but you may need to find out more information on diet, so could ask what type of food does he get? A closed question at the end can help to clarify the understanding and confirm the details. So for example, he gets two meals a day of, of a dry, complete food, and a little bit of plain chicken on a Sunday. Is that right? So what impact have Petwise MOTs had for PDSA's clients? Since their launch in 2012, we've trained over 250 of the clinical team and delivered 140,000 of these consultations across our pet hospitals and within the community on our pet check vehicles. And this wasn't a case of doing more work. It was about reviewing what we currently did and replacing what we were currently doing with what, where, the, where Petwise MOTs fitted and were suitable to replace. For pets that have received an MOT, we've seen up to 40% increases in the uptake of preventative services, a 45% reduction in welfare needs not being met, and a 14% increase in wel welfare needs that are fully met across the board. What's also really encouraging is that 28% of the pets we see in our Petwise MOTs go on to receive some form of treatment for a condition that was identified in that health and welfare check. On top of these life-changing benefits for pets, 86% of clients found the service extremely beneficial. 90% of the vets and nurses that deliver these services believe that MOTs are a really effective tool for improving pet well-being. And 100% of clients feel that every UK veterinary practice should offer this or a similar service. I'm almost finished, uh, but um, I have popped my, my own and the pet health and welfare team's contact details. So if you have got any further uh, questions and I don't get a chance to meet you today, please do get in touch. PDSA are also running four workshops the remainder of this year for anybody who would like to know how to run a Petwise MOT in more detail. And you can find out more and to book at pdsa.org.uk forward slash Petwise MOT. I'm going to leave you with a short quote from Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon we've got to change the world. And I really firmly believe that with the passion, enthusiasm, skills, experience, and knowledge in the veterinary profession, if we adjust slightly how we communicate with our clients, the impact that we have can have tremendous effects. Thank you very much for listening. It's been a real honor.